Furnaces are annoying. No matter what I do, it always seems like I'm out of fuel. Now, obviously, there are ways around this. You could go out and gather some coal, but that's gross. You could set up an AFK lava farm using cauldrons and dripstone, but then you have to rebind the right-click button to something on your keyboard, then balance something on the keyboard. It's very frustrating. You could, of course, use bamboo, but bamboo burns out so incredibly quickly that you need so much of it flowing into the furnace. And then there's dried kelp blocks. They are a great fuel source, and kelp farms are quite easy to build, but you had to smelt the kelp and then you had to craft it into a block. Kind of frustrating. That is, until these things came along. Today we're going to be making an automatically fueling furnace. First things first, we need a kelp farm. And I think I'm just going to pinch the design from my Hermitcraft Season 7 Industrial District. It looks cool, it's really simple to build, there's no chance of any kelp getting lost, and it drops out a decent amount. And to be honest, I just wanted an excuse to return to my Hermitcraft Season 7 Industrial District. So let's get it built. I absolutely love farms that are just repeating patterns, this makes life so much easier. I can tell you now, the one that I built in Hermitcraft Season 7 Industrial District took considerably longer than this one. But cool, all of the circuitry is now in place. We have a fully functional kelp farm. So now it's time to make our auto crafter smelter system. So to give you a heads up on what we have to do, we have to take the kelp that comes out of this farm, we have to put it into a furnace, turn it into dried kelp, then craft it into a kelp block, and then we need to store some of the kelp blocks, but then also put some of the kelp blocks back into the furnace system so that they're kind of smelting themselves. Sound simple is simple, but not quite as simple as you would think, because say for example, our furnace has got a kelp block on the inside of it, and then one piece of kelp travels through the furnace, and then nothing else. Well, that one piece of kelp is going to get smelted up, but then that entire kelp block is going to continue burning away. It could have produced 21 pieces of dried kelp, but instead it's only produced one, <laughs> uh, which is very inefficient, especially because we've used nine pieces of dried kelp to make the kelp block. So that means we've used nine bits of dried kelp to make one piece of dried kelp. That that maths doesn't add up. This is what's known as a non-stonk situation. So how do we solve this? Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna take you along the journey of me working this one out. First idea was to have a system that detects how many items are inside the furnace. When it gets to 21, then it will allow a kelp block to go in as fuel. But that won't quite work because if the kelp's flowing in fast, than it's smelting, it will never drop back below 21, which means we'll never get more fuel going back in. I could do something with the fact that observers can observe when a furnace is smelting and when it's not. So let's say if there is a strong enough signal strength in this top hopper up here, the observer can then fire, yeah, shooting kelp blocks into the into the system. That might actually work. I mean, that just doesn't really work either. Why am I finding this so complicated? I've made some modifications to it. Now the observer moves out the way and stops detecting if the furnace is turning off and on when there isn't enough kelp, but there's issues with this as well. This feels so simple. And yet, I can't do it. Thing is, initially, I wanted it to be incredibly modular. Each furnace had its own separate circuit, so you could expand it depending on the size of your kelp farm. But now I'm starting to think that one bulk interconnected system is probably the way to go. Yeah, I actually have an idea for something that I think is going to work really well. I have. It's ridiculously simple. This small four furnace setup will work for very small kelp farms. This eight furnace setup might work for a farm this size. I'm going to give it a test. And for big farms, you can have 16 furnaces. So how does this part work? So our kelp is gradually flowing into this hopper mine cart. And eventually, when it fully fills up with 320 pieces of kelp, it will then go across into this part of the system and start looping around, depositing all of the kelp into the furnace. Furnaces. Now the reason that I mentioned 320 items and not 5 stacks is because 320 is divisible by 20 and 20 is the number of blocks that one kelp block can smelt. So you can see with this 8 furnace set up here, each one of these furnaces is going to have 40 pieces of kelp put inside of it, which means that it will use 2 kelp blocks to smelt all of that kelp then. And here we go, it should stop now cool and then the hopper minecart returns to its original place and starts filling up with kelp again with a small four furnace setup each furnace would be filled with 80 kelp and with a large setup 16 furnaces each would be filled with 20. okay now that the math is out of the way let's do the kelp block distribution and annoyingly i think that's going to require some modification of the top but the math still holds up what on earth is going on here <laughs> I, I think this is still working I just think there's a lot of strange visual glitches going on. Yep. Yep, it's just, it's cursed, but in a way that works. Kind of like me, I guess. So I now have all of the rails in place to drop out the kelp blocks, and I just tested it. It seems to be working. This is where all of our kelp blocks flow in. So now, I guess I have to take all of this dried kelp 
craft it into kelp blocks somewhere over here and then send it into this hopper occasionally. Now the auto crafting should actually be really quite simple because we can just take a comparator output from our crafter then we can run a signal strength of nine into the side of it. And to make that super easy, I'm just going to use another crafter to do that. And then from there, I'm just going to connect that to a redstone clock, which is going to run into the block underneath the crafter. And that should do everything. So when we get the kelp in here, I mean, that was easy until it wasn't. Why is that still powered? Has this not realized that it's powered? Oh. Okay, we've got a bit of a bud situation going on. That's curious. So to put that into simple terms, uh, this comparator here is not realizing that the craft there is empty. And the only way that we can make it realize is by causing it a block update. Okay, <laughs> I'm choosing not to deal with that and I'm just going to have a permanent redstone clock running. So this crafter is constantly now trying to craft things and when it finally gets a successful craft, it will turn it into a kelp block. Now I need to make it so that at least 45% of the kelp blocks that are created go back into circulation to smelt the kelp. Half of the time this bottom hopper is locked, which means the items will go across. Half the time the bottom hopper is open, which means the items will go down. Except because we only need 45% of the kelp blocks as opposed to 50% of the kelp blocks, I've added in this little circuit right here, which will switch off the redstone clock when we start getting too many of them. Because we want the bare minimum of kelp blocks to be recycled back into the kelp block creation system right I'd say we're done okay it seems like the redstone clock division system doesn't work don't know why or at least I do know why but I didn't think it would be a problem so now I've replaced it with a new clock system that definitely is going to work and now I have this giant super smelter which is going to be the output for our kelp blocks and now I think we're ready to go so up at the top here you can see our hopper minecart is gradually filling up with kelp items from our gigantic kelp farm now if this gets fully filled you'll see that the hopper minecart travels off and starts putting kelp into the furnaces. Now, each one of these furnaces is going to be filled up with 40 pieces of kelp. The reason that 40 is important is because it's divisible by 20, which means that we're going to have efficient kelp block smelting. Now, the output of these furnaces travels down here into this crafter, and you can see that this crafter is gradually crafting up kelp blocks. Now half of the kelp blocks travel up into this hopper minecart here and the other half of the kelp blocks travel into this hopper minecart over here which when it's filled up will deposit to all of the kelp blocks into these furnaces. So half of the output of this thing goes into the super smelter, half of the output goes back into the kelp smelter so that it can infinitely smelt kelp. And obviously as all of this is happening we still have more kelp running from the kelp farm into this top minecart hopper so it's loading up for another run. Oh it looks like our minecart has got 23 kelp blocks in it so it's just gone back and forth and all of the kelp blocks have been evenly distributed in the furnaces. So each one of these furnaces is now capable of smelting 40 items and we have 11 furnaces working at once which means this is going to be a pretty fast furnace smelter. You can see the output is coming out now and all of this is powered purely by our fully automatic kelp crafter. This has been a fun project to work on. I hope you enjoyed. Well done, low down in the description. Catch you in the next one. See ya!